and welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Nashville State Representative Brenda Gilmore, veteran political reporter Clint Brewer, and we're changing how we introduce Steve because he's gotten bigger than all of us. Syndicated <laughs> conservative <laughs> talk show host Steve Gilmore. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Stimulus bill has passed. They're still waiting on final passage of the compromise version, but it's going to happen. We'll probably get numbers next week. What does this mean for the state? Obviously, money is going to come here, 3 to $4 billion, and that is good news in that there's going to be fewer layoffs, yet the hole still gets dug deeper by borrowing this money. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it, and I guess the most important piece that I'm excited about is the job creation mm -hmm. piece. It's estimated that Tennessee will get something like 75,000 to 80,000 jobs. And when you look at uh, where we are in terms of mortgages, losing mortgages as a result of foreclosures, people losing their jobs and just not being able to keep food on their tables, I'm excited about the job creation. I think the construction, uh, the amount that's going to go into construction will help a lot too. We've seen a tremendous amount going there. Didn't get as much in the education mm -hmm. as I thought we would, but the job creation, I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing about that. There's also going to be a local effect. I mean, these projects land locally. Uh, some of the local governments, like Nashville, they're expecting some money. Uh, so, you know, you're going to see an effect, a trickle-down effect, all the way to the city level. The problem is the cost, and it's yeah. uh, $790 billion is what we're being told by the White House. That doesn't include interest. We don't have this money. We're having to go out and borrow this money. The interest cost alone for the next 10 years is going to be over $300 billion, and the Congressional Budget Office says that the new programs that are included here actually brings this bill to a cost of $3.27 trillion. Uh, I'm not convinced, and nor is the Congressional Budget Office or the uh, economist in Washington that is going to create the kind of numbers that we're being told by the Obama White House. Hopefully it will work, but we've seen nothing in the first several trillion we've spent in stimulus and bailouts that would show that this is going to work any better. Talked to the governor. He hasn't got the total numbers yet. He'll get them probably next week. But he said even with the money, if they get the most, $4 billion, he said they're still going to have to have some kind of cuts, maybe half of what they anticipated, but that still means about a th maybe as many as a thousand people will lose their jobs in state government. Exactly, and I think we, our alternatives were not to do anything. We had to do something. When you look at what all the economists are seeing and all the experts are seeing, they're all saying that America <clears throat> has never faced anything like what we're facing now. So nobody knows exactly how to approach this, but we had to do something, I agree. Well, nobody's been saying, though, do nothing. I think that's unfortunately what's been coming out of the Barack Obama White House, that the Republicans are saying do nothing. Actually, the Republicans proposed $400 billion in tax cuts that would put money right back into the pockets of the American consumer. That's where it'll get spent, not spending $30 million on the harvest marsh mouse in, in, uh, in the district of Nancy Pelosi, uh, $8 billion building a railway from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. That's what's tucked in here. The pork barrel spending is outrageous, and again, we're going to be paying for it for generations. Well, and, and what you have to remember now is that, it, as the president has said, it's going to get worse before it gets better, mm -hmm. and that's really the political danger in it for the Obama White House. There's going to be a period here where people have heard the stimulus package has been passed, they're waiting for things to get better, and they're going to keep getting worse. So, you know, that is really going to be the, the push-pull for the Obama White House is waiting for this to kick in. And again, as the critics have said, if it even will kick in and make a difference. Governor Bredesen believes this should help ease some of the expenses and cuts to higher education specifically. Maybe tuition won't have to go up quite as much. Senator Alexander is critical, saying that they need to address housing more than they have, and that doesn't really get addressed in this bill. Well, again, the, the tax credits that we've heard so much about that were $1,000 on the campaign trail, then were $500. And keep in mind, Michelle Obama last year was criticizing the $600 tax credits that the Bush administration sent out. It ended up at $400 tax credits mm -hmm. for lower and middle income workers. That comes to $8 a week. We are not going to rebuild our prosperity with people getting an extra $8 a week. There's also a piece in there that are incentives, though, for first-time homebuyers yes. to get something like $8,000 if, if you're purchasing a home. And I think that that's going to help a lot in terms of jumpstart the, the housing market here. And I wanted to say um, uh, also the tax cuts that we've had in the past have not worked. We've seen eight years of tax cuts, and they're just simply not working. So we've got to do something different. If you keep doing the same things, you keep getting the same results. That's not true, though. The, what we saw after 9-11 was a trillion-dollar hit to our economy, and the only reason we didn't slip into recession or depression then is that the tax cuts revitalized the economy. It's just been in the last two years when the housing crisis, when the financial crisis hit, that we saw the economy go down. The tax cuts did revitalize our economy. Well, That's what works. The, the key here, though, is tax cuts, no ca tax cuts, j credits for housing 
houses, people have to have jobs right. to have income to tax. They have to have jobs to be able to buy first-time houses. So, you know, unless that first piece falls into place, the rest of this is kind of window dressing. But the problem is window dressing was when the president earlier this week went to Elkhart, Indiana, and blamed the Bush tax cuts for why we've seen Elkhart, Indiana, see their unemployment go from 4 to 15 percent over the last year. It has nothing to do with the Bush tax cuts. It's because gas went to $5 a gallon. It's because Elkhart is the RV capital of the world. They make 50 percent of all the RVs in the world. People don't buy them when gas is $5 a gallon, and the Obama administration is going to push gas right back to those numbers with their energy and environmental policies. It is all smoke and mirrors. Last week we were talking about the governor possibly becoming a cabinet member of HHS. We said about 50-50 last week. Not much has changed since then. He even <laughs> says it's probably 50-50, maybe less than that. But there's no doubt he's being considered for this post. Well, he, he is being considered. There was an interesting rumor rippling through the Capitol uh, yesterday, actually, that he had gotten the job, and, and which his, his senior staff quickly had to quell and, and tamp down that. <laughs> so, so we've seen these little eruptions down at the Capitol. He's got it. But he, you know, he's still, uh, he still is being considered, I think. And, and, and I, they're going to go slowly. I think with this one and with commerce, given what they've done with the last few, gotten people up very quick and had them shot down. Had some issues. That's the moment when Ramsey went in and started measuring for drapes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And I think also that um, the President Obama's administration is no drama Obama. So the fact that we're hearing so much discussion about it probably leads me to believe that uh, the governor may be right, that it's probably less than 50% chance that he will get appointed. Although I will say that he does have some background in, in a considerable amount of background in the health care. 30 seconds ago, were you surprised that Kent Williams was booted from the GOP? We kind of saw it coming. Not really surprised. What will really play out is what happens in the next election back up in Carter County. I suspect that Kent Williams will not be returned to the legislature. Was not surprised at all. I thought it was going to happen sooner. I was very surprised. In fact, uh, I would have thought that the Republican would, would have wanted to keep the majority uh, edge that they had in the House, and now it's exactly split, and so it's even Democrat mm -hmm. and Republican with one independent, although Speaker Williams has says he wants to be a Republican. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Brenda Gilmore, Clint Brewer, Steve Gill, appreciate your insights. Stay with us as we continue in a moment.